This is the third year Zinedine Zidane lives in a rather strange mood. Being one of the most sought after football coaches in the world, time after time he is electing to rest in the family circle, rejecting all the flattering offers for the elite of managerial industry. This situation is extremely unusual, to say the least. For instance, neither Jose Guardiola nor Carlo Ancelotti didn't move away from active work for more than one year, and Jose Mourinho is no different to them in this regard. As for Jurgen Klopp, he labored basically with no respite since his distant mind's days. For the man of this profession, it's almost an unwritten rule. One year sabbatical is fine, it's more than enough in order to recuperate energy, calmly look around and reinvent yourself. But two years of rest is really too much. During this period, you may lose not only sharpness, focus and orientation in space, but also step back in time. Usually prominent managers resort to this option only in the case if they continue to receive salary from the club they were forced to leave. Rafael Benitez, Luciano Spalletti and Massimiliano Allegri are prime examples of it. But three years of pause looks like almost verdict, leaving the one who was out of work for so long in oblivion. Indeed, the man of Zidane's stature is not risking to be forgotten, but his achievements as a manager are getting farther and farther away in time, and this kind of behavior definitely has very serious reasons behind it. The desire to avoid relentless stress and keep himself healthy is undoubtedly the major of them. The Frenchman admitted many times that by the end of each full season in the role of Real Madrid head coach, he felt himself absolutely exhausted even more so than in his playing days. In addition to it, despite the envious genes, both his parents are alive, well in their 80s now. Zidane several years ago tragically lost his older brother Farid, who died after a long battle with cancer, being only 54. Moreover, personally, Zinedine has the aggravating circumstance in the form of his UV pest, given the dubious pharmacological methods that big serial clubs weren't shy at all to deploy in the 1990s in order to drastically increase the fitness levels of their players. Gianluca Vialli and Sinisha Mikhailovic paid particularly high price for it. Didier Deschamps and Roberto Baggio turned grey in their earlier 30s, while Zidane and Antonio Conte as well started to go bold even at a younger age. No wonder that right now the Frenchman wants to minimize risks and prefers to be in as much quiet environment as he can find. On top of that, he can afford it from the pure financial point of view, whilst many even marquee name coaches are forced to work constantly in order to simply retain a certain level of life, Zidane is not only rich enough to be out of profession for ages, but also could earn a lot through his sheer popularity and celebrity status. Being an ambassador of various prestigious brands, including Alpine and Adidas, he is at the same time among the most followed athletes, be it the current or retired ones, on Instagram. Recently, the Frenchman overtook Andres Iniesta in the battle for the 14th spot if they take footballers only, and although the cost of advertising post in Zinedine's account is not even near of Cristiano Ronaldo, Lionel Messi, Neymar or Kylian Mbappé's figures, the numbers are still impressive. No other famous manager, including Guardiola or Klopp, has such weapon and such a reliable way of getting money without spending a plenty of energy, so Zidane would be financially safe even in the case he decides to not renew at all coaching activity. 
On the contrary, if he find another team, the national one or club, money definitely won't be a major team or stumbling block. The Frenchman's affection to his family and his wife Veronique is the other deterrent. There is no secret that she doesn't want to leave Madrid on a constant basis under any circumstances, and as a loving husband, Zinedine is obediently following the baseline, although it's highly likely that the capital of Spain is his favorite and happy place too. Taking this into account, almost any walk abroad, far away from Madrid, seems rather unrealistic prospect. Along with the territorial limits, evidently there are also the human ones. The truth is that Zidane is extremely selective in terms of potential work. To make a long story short, for him it's more like a relationship than a deal, albeit advantageous. In that sense, his ex-Real Madrid teammate Thomas Gravesen was right on the money by saying in the recent interview to Discovery Plus that the Frenchman actually has only three viable options – Real Madrid, the France national team and Marseille. It's obvious that with all of them Zinedine has a deep emotional bond. The first two are inextricably linked with his best playing years and achievements. Let's not forget about Juventus too, but it's well known that Veronique didn't enjoy at all living in Turin, plus Zidane himself quietly became kind of estranged from the Italian giant over the last 20-25 years. As for Marseille, this is his hometown club, the childhood and adolescent love. Bearing in mind that Marseille are far away both financially and sporting-wise from its golden era in the intersection of the 1980s and 1990s, we probably should reduce the number of the Frenchman's options to two and a half. The return to Real Madrid also doesn't look feasible. Been twice in this role in the past, Zidane know full well how heavy this burden is and how tough, stressful and at times ungrateful this job could be. It remains only the France national team, and this is the best possible bet without a shadow of doubt. This job, in the particular case of Zidane, fits all the parameters. The emotional attachment is there. In the form of France, Zidane will have a high-performance team with one of the best, if not the best, rosters in the world for years to come. This work promised to be way less stressful keeping in mind that on the international level there are only about 15 games per year, while the likes of Real Madrid are playing four times more often. For the very same reason, the Frenchman could continue to live in Madrid with several dozens of trips over the year, it's more than possible. The main obstacle has a slightly different look here. The thing is that this post is by no means vacant. Been at the helm of Le Bleu for almost 12 years now, Deschamps has no intention at all to step down. It's worth remembering that before the World Cup in Qatar, Zidane has been considered as a strong candidate to be the heir of Didier, whose contract back at the time was ready to expire, but the incumbent coach brilliantly retained his job despite the barrage of injuries and so-called curse of champions. In order to keep his role, Deschamps was supposed to reach the semi-final stage at least, which initially hasn't been an easy task given all the issues, but he even exceeded the goal and now is protected by the comfortable contract until the summer of 2026. The upcoming year might change this disposition though, being a heavy favorite France aren't immune to the potential early elimination, similar to the one Le Bleu suddenly faced in 2021, taking into account how fine is the margin in the playoff, where the sole match will be decisive for the fate of the teams. Otherwise, in the event of France's successful performance, Zidane will have to wait until 
2026 at least, and looking at how he is enjoying rest and traveling in the company of his beloved wife, it's hardly going to be a problem. In the situation when this particular job is a matter of when and not if, another additional year or two of pause shouldn't make too much difference.